You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India is rapidly growing into one of the world's biggest airliner industry. With the recent launch of Akasa airliner, the competition-driven acceleration has picked fresh momentum. Experts say with more budget airlines entering Indian market, the travelers are poised to experience quick and affordable journeys in coming times. A consistently ascending trajectory of India's aviation sector has paved way for a competition-driven acceleration amongst the country's airliners. Akasa Airline, the country's latest entry into an established and competitive airline industry, set off its commercial operations with its first flight on the Mumbai Ahmedabad route. Backed by the late billionaire investor Rakesh Junjanwala, Akasa has a 72 Boeing aircraft fleet on order and is set to compete directly with other budget carriers like Indigo, Spicejet, and Gophers. Akasa launched operations with aims to connect India's metropolitan cities with smaller towns. Their strategy was created in line with the government's regional connectivity scheme, which was designed to make airline travel available to common citizens at affordable prices. In the last five years, we have grown from 2013-14 almost 6 crore passengers to almost 14.5 crore passengers. We forecast by 2027, India will have 40 crore passengers per year. That's the kind of phenomenal growth. And if that phenomenal growth has to be made possible, it can only be made possible by a number of players coming into the sector. Currently, there are nine scheduled airlines operating in India, the biggest being Air India, Indigo, Spicejet, AirAsia India, GoFirst and Vistara. In a major challenge to the existing players, in January of this year, the Tata Group secured control of the state-run carrier Air India in a 2.4 billion USD equity and debt deal, ending years of struggle trying to privatize the financially troubled airline. Three years after being grounded due to a cash crunch, Jet Airways is also back in business as well. The airline is expected to resume its commercial operations from September. The Ministry of Civil Aviation, which has welcomed such growth and expansion, expects the fresh competition to generate 100,000 new jobs in the next two years. Travel restrictions during the coronavirus pandemic had severely affected the industry. With the easing of restrictions, India's domestic air travel has made a sharp recovery, with airlines flying over 57 million passengers in the first half of this year, up by 238% from last year. India is seeing a phenomenal revival post-COVID restrictions. Though the industry started very slow, but it picked up the momentum and it's in a full swing. If you see that aviation market, Indian aviation market, is the fourth largest next to US, China, and the UK. Now, soon we are expecting that the India will take over, overtake even the UK. Now, government, uh, because of the Udan scheme, airlines started operating more than 600 routes. And uh, because of this, the more than 10 million people have benefited. And it's expected next two years, it will double more than uh, the present figures of 10 million. Observers say the sky is the limit for the aviation sector in India. The Airports Authority of India, the implementing agency, has awarded 948 routes under the Regional Connectivity Scheme, from which 405 routes involving 65 airports have been operationalized as of March this year. With more routes and airports opening up, the airline industry is set to witness robust growth. This brings more investment opportunities for the country, thereby also enhancing the employment potential as well. This is another rapidly developing story of Brand India. Moving on. The story that is creating ripples in newsrooms and top political circles world over is China's satellite and ICBM tracker ship Yuan Wong 5 
getting docked in Sri Lankan waters at Hambantota port. While some call it Beijing's response to Washington's growing assertiveness in South China Sea and Taiwan, others believe China is leveraging its clout to contain New Delhi's strengthening camaraderie with Colombo, especially in the backdrop of the unprecedented economic crisis that Sri Lanka has plunged into and India providing it all necessary support to keep it afloat. The Chinese survey vessel Yuan Wang 5 docked at Sri Lanka's Chinese built port of Hambantota. As per the observers, the movement of the ship is likely to fuel contention between India and China, two of Sri Lanka's biggest allies in its current economic crisis. Some also say that China could use the port near the main Asia-Europe shipping route as a military base. Foreign security analysts describe the Yuan Wang 5 as one of China's latest generation space tracking ships used to monitor satellite, rocket and intercontinental ballistic missile launches. As per different media reports, Sri Lanka was reluctant to allow the boat entering its waters, fearing this could impact its resurgence from the deep economic crisis, but China leveraged its clout in the global bodies to threaten Colombo, which could have hampered the process of it receiving the much-needed IMF bailout package. Hours after the ship docked, a Sri Lankan cabinet spokesman said, the island nation was working to ensure that there was no friction between friendly countries. China on the other side released a symbolic statement calling it a regular exercise which strengthened the bilateral ties between the two sides. You have experienced some different rough weather this time on the Indian Ocean. The port call of Yuan Wang 5 to Hanman Tota finally comes through. It manifests not only your courage, tenacity and invincibility, but also the deep-rooted, unfading and enduring friendship between our two countries. According to diplomats based in Sri Lanka, the number of Chinese spy ships in the guise of research vessels have steadily increased in the past decade in the Indian Ocean region. It is understood that since 2020, 53 so-called Chinese research vessels have been monitored in the Indian Ocean region as not less than three to five such spy ships are operating in the area at any given time. The deployment of such vessels, observers say, served the Xi Jinping regime as a tool for maritime diplomacy in the form of joint surveys with Indian Ocean region, littoral states and provide access to strategically important areas within the exclusive economic zone of a third country. They also call it a hostile act by the Chinese given the context of the ongoing tensions between the Indian and Chinese armies along the LAC at another end of Indian Peninsula. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka has urged China to help it recover with the economic crisis only. We hope and request China, our long-standing friend, to assist us in restructuring our debts and secure an IMF bailout as soon as possible and provide with some meaningful bridging finance. Not just financial, but Sri Lanka is also undergoing a massive political shift in recent days and if the observers are to be believed, then there are stark differences amongst the leaders and diplomats in Sri Lankan top brass vis-a-vis -vis their outlook towards India and China. And amid these unpredictable times of deepening geopolitical rivalries, nobody can say for sure as to what is going to happen next. What is going to be next move of Sri Lanka, China or the United States of America? We just know that Sri Lanka is suffering and the politics should be kept aside to save the island nation. To save the people of the island nation and last but not the least, 
टू सेव ह्यूमैनिटी मूविंग ऑन इट्स बीन अयर सिंस द तालिबान स्वेप्ड टू पावर इन अफगानिस्तान एंड नॉट अ डे हैज गॉन बाय व्हेन अफगान्स डिडंट सफर from acute poverty to frequent terrorist attacks the afghans are facing it all the hapless citizens are making desperate appeals to the international community and other countries to come to their rescue some lucky ones who managed to get refuge in other countries are worried as their family members are still suffering the repercussions that came along the taliban takeover Stroke by stroke and meter by meter, these Afghan women are weaving their fresh journey of freedom after their fortunate escape from Taliban-ruled Afghanistan. However, thoughts about their families and loved ones not lucky enough to have made their way to Sydney or other different countries continue to haunt them. The news stories of continued women's rights violations. The Taliban's return to their previous hardline modus operandi and escalated violence in the war-torn country compound their fear. Their fears are well founded. Thousands of miles away in their native country, the human rights situation becomes more grim by the day. In the course of the last 1 year, the Taliban have made the country one of the most dangerous places for human life, where every single breath is considered a blessing. Under the one-year Taliban rule that began amidst chaos and uncertainty last year, all that the country has experienced is a subjugation of rights, state-imposed restrictions, targeted killings, and a spike in the number of terror attacks. The recent bomb explosion in Kabul, targeting the Shiite Muslim community, was one example of how the situation in Afghanistan has panned out since the Taliban takeover. the fact that explosions have been occurring in shia shia mosques that shias are being targeted in tali in the uh, in uh, talibanized afghanistan should not surprise anybody initially because the taliban had managed to recruit shia commanders at the behest of iran people thought this would be a more inclusive taliban i think that has been shown to be false quite some time ago and uh, so if in Taliban ruled Afghanistan Shiites are being targeted it's not surprising at all The Taliban leaders have been boasting about their self-proclaimed achievements towards restoring peace in the country The reality on the ground however is a sharp contrast Observers say the Taliban are not equipped to provide even moderate level security to the citizens let alone save them from any outsider attacks In fact, they themselves have been the perpetrator in chief of atrocities committed against the people of Afghanistan. The Taliban are also accused of providing support to the terrorists that they had vowed to never give a safe haven to. The promises of the Doha agreement seem to have been forgotten. The concerns over the Taliban supporting terrorist groups operating within the country are a main reason behind many countries' reluctance in providing any form of direct assistance to pull the country out of the massive economic crisis it has plunged into. It is the common man who is suffering because of the Taliban's politics and ideology. Many in the country don't have adequate food and are living in poverty. In a heart-wrenching video report by German media organization Deutsche Welle, instances of desperate Afghans selling their children due to abject poverty had come to light. There are only a handful of operational hospitals and they are at capacity treating malnourished children. Afghanistan is staring at a major humanitarian disaster. Bale, ye bozam ziyad misha, fakhr va tangdasti roz ba roz da kishvar ma shuma ziyad shoda ras, ye har chiz ziyad shoda suy taghazi waqiyatish ziyad misha. Hapless Afghans in and outside the country are making desperate appeals to the international community to lend them a helping hand. The looming hunger crisis has the potential to push the country further into collapse in the coming times. Observers say if the Taliban does not amend its ways and come up with a policy that is friendly for both its citizens and the international community, 
then Afghans will be staring at their darkest days. The potential for positive changes lies with the Taliban only, and it is they who will have to decide how the future of their country will unfold. Time now for Asia This Week, stories from across the continent. Myanmar's military leadership this week lashed out at the ASEAN grouping of Southeast Asian countries for excluding its generals from regional gatherings, accusing it of caving to external pressure. Members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations have heaped condemnation on Myanmar's junta, which they say has failed to make concrete progress on a peace plan agreed within the 10-nation bloc last year, including engaging with opponents and a cessation of hostilities. Myanmar's military seized power from an elected government in a coup last year and has since then crushed dissent with lethal force. Most recently, the junta has been criticized for executing political activists and imprisoning Aung San Suu Kyi, the symbol of Myanmar's opposition and democracy movement. ASEAN has barred Myanmar's generals from attending regional meetings and some members said last month it would be forced to rethink the way forward unless the junta demonstrates progress on the peace plan. The junta has declined offers to send non-political representatives instead to ASEAN meetings. Several Western countries, including the United States and Britain, have imposed sanctions on Myanmar's junta over the coup. On a row of greenhouses around 31 miles from Taiwan's capital of Taipei, vanilla farmer Seng Sin Fu is overseeing the installation of dozens of solar panels, part of a renewable development plan that could help the island dissolve its energy needs without sacrificing its scarce farmland. Seng's farm, which currently exports most of its crop to Japan, is expanding to meet growing demands from elsewhere and the government's support for solar energy has given him an opportunity to do so without risking his livelihood. The use of distributed solar panels installed on walls and rooftops has become an increasingly popular option for regions where the land is at premium. Taiwan provides generous subsidies for rooftop panels and the government is also obliged to buy the surplus electricity they produce, providing Seng's greenhouses with a vital new earning opportunity. These are little car models which have been developed by the hands of little kids. The scene was witnessed at the Kids Engineer 2022 which was recently held in Yokohama, Japan where children learned about engineering cars. A number of Japanese automakers and part manufacturers also participated in the event. Because of the burning issue of climate change, children are being taught about the importance of decarbonization and the usage of energy sources such as hydrogen and wind power. あの、These children have built a model car kit and have learnt about the programming of speed and direction. The reason why the car is not hitting the wall is because it is equipped with an infrared reflection signal system that prevents it from doing so. A special cap that children wear has a device for measuring brain waves. Children can be diagnosed with emotional changes while driving by measuring their brain wave. The automobile industry in Japan recognizes and promotes carbon neutral and autonomous driving machineries. These kids will surely grow up and become good automobile engineers. Excavators and drain pipes are the latest inventions in sewerage machinery. 
Japan's sewage industry is facing to turning point at the Japanese company DX, which is incorporating digital technology. え、今下水道が抱えている大きな課題。これを解決するための、え、いろいろな情報を展開しています。例えば、え、気候変動問題、それから、え、情報化に関係するデジタルトランスフォーメーションの問題。下水道の普及がですね、90% を Surveying sewerage pipes and facilities consumes a lot of time and effort from humans. Underwater drone for sewer research is attracting a lot of attention. The development of drone with updated technologies and improved image quality and operating performance in the dark is progressing. Sewerage is used in the case of flood accidents. The technology to understand water storage quickly is enabled by digitalization. During the summer vacation in Japan, this event was held to help many people and children learn about sewer. The sewer system's structure, microorganisms in the water and uniquely designed manholes in various locations were all introduced. Japan's new technology for the sewerage industry is evolving through major digital transformations that will contribute to the world's sewerage technology in the future. Indians recently got soaked in the vibrant celebrations of the much-awaited Krishna Janamashtami festival. Devotees across the country thronged Krishna temple and offered special prayers to mark the annual festival. Krishna Janamashtami is celebrated to mark the birth of Lord Krishna. He is believed to be the eighth incarnation of Lord Vishnu and is revered across the country. Krishna Janmashtami is one of the most popular festivals of India. Recently, these Hindu devotees from across India chanted Hare Krishna, Hare Rama to mark the auspicious occasion of Krishna Janmashtami with religious fervor and immense enthusiasm. It is celebrated every year to mark the birth anniversary of Lord Krishna, which falls in late August or early September, according to Gregorian calendar. Lord Krishna, a son of Vasudev and Devaki, is worshipped as the eighth incarnation of Hindu god Vishnu. We are celebrating Sri Krishna Janmasam with all the grandeur. Festivals are the times where you can gratify all your senses spiritually. Lord Krishna is adorned with a special Sri Rindavan Krishna Alankara, which is a feast to your eyes. On the auspicious occasion, temples across the country were decorated in glittery lights where devotees danced, sang devotional hymns and chanting of Lord Krishna captivated everyone. Believers observe fast on this day and abstain from consuming grains until the next day and perform various rituals in their homes. Janmashtami means Krishna's birth. So this is our biggest festival in the year. And its preparations start a month before. It looks like it's going to be outside. And it's going to be waterproofing. It starts all the time before. The festivities reach climax at midnight as it is believed that Lord Krishna was born at that hour. The idol of Krishna is cleaned with milk, curd and ghee and decorated with new clothes and ornaments. Then the idol is placed on a cradle to symbolize the birth of the Lord. India possesses many such festivals which provide an opportunity for different sections of the society to unite and celebrate together. A number of joyous activities are part of the festival. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.
You're watching Tag TV.